Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so I'm going to skip the intro today because I want to talk about something kind of serious. And I feel like anytime I talk about Eugenia Cooney over here, um, I typically skip the intro. I think that I do because I feel like talking about Eugenia Cooney in the way that it deserves to be spoken about um, is very, very serious. So um, let me let me tell you what happened. I am not somebody that watches Eugenia on a regular basis at all. Um, but this weekend, I posted something on my Instagram. I think it was Saturday night or I think it was Sunday night. I posted on my Instagram, like, what topics do you guys want me to talk about on my drama channel this weekend? And I got bombarded with people asking me to talk about Eugenia Cooney's TikTok. And I was like, what's going on with Eugenia Cooney's TikTok? I, I have no idea. And then I got a couple people that reached out to me and asked me to watch Adam McIntyre's video where he's talking about Eugenia Cooney and um, several TikToks of hers that came out. So I watched a little bit of his video. I don't like to, uh, if I'm going to cover something over here, I don't like to watch other uh, commentary videos about it because I don't want it to sway my opinion. So I will watch, I, I think I watched like three or four minutes of his video. Um, and he's going to be talking about, this. he talked about the same thing that I'm going to be talking about today. These TikToks that went viral of hers where she's eating and she's at Disney World with her mom and things like that. So, um, I will watch the video after this, but I don't want my opinion or my thoughts to be swayed by anybody else's commentary. So, I, I, I don't know what, going into this, I don't know what Adam said about this. Um, you know, Eugenia is somebody to me that... <sighs> The last time that I made a video about Eugenia Cooney, um, I think I called it something like, Eugenia Cooney needs help. Um, I, I have a feeling I'll probably title the video something very similar to that today. Um, Eugenia Cooney is somebody, for me, that I think it's an important conversation to have. Now, I want to I make this very, very clear going into this video. I know, even if Eugenia Cooney watches this video or anybody that sh that is around her watches this video, that that's not going to change anything in the world of Eugenia Cooney, right? I'm just sharing my perspective on it. And often, when I share things about my personal life or my experience with things, um, it, it's just for me, it's trying to plant the seed in the same way that the seed was planted for me, for other people. Um, so I want to make that very, very clear. Also, in one of these TikToks that she has, she is at Disney World and she's talking about that we just need to pe treat people with kindness. It's, the, Eugenia always does this. This is kind of the thing that she does when she gets a lot of negative comments is that she comes out and says, you know, we're all just human beings and I think that we need to treat the world with kindness and we just need to be nice to one another and we should just, you know, treat each other with kindness. And she just says that over and over and over again, right? Like that's the thing that she does. She, she does this often. Often, um, in the time that I have watched her and covered her, she'll come out when she's getting a lot of backlash and she'll say, you know, you guys, like, I just think we're all human beings and we should just be nice to one another and all, and all that kind of stuff and, and treat each other like human beings. So since Eugenia Cooney asked that, I am going to treat Eugenia Cooney in this video the way that I would treat any close friend of mine in my personal life, um, off of YouTube. So, because this is something that I, I have, uh, dealt with a lot in my personal life is friends of mine and people in my life that have had eating disorders. Okay. And I am not going to walk around that topic. And that's what I was going to say was the last video that I did uh, talking about her. I, I feel like whenever I watch people cover Eugenia Cooney, it's like, there's always like kind of like this unwritten rule that you can't really come right out and say eating disorder, or I'm worried about her when the comments of, are literally flooded, um, of people saying to Eugenia Cooney, um, like, I'm really worried about you. And this is something I said in my last video talking about Eugenia Cooney is that, um, she, I, I don't know where she, how she interprets hate comments from supportive comments, because I see in her videos a lot of really nasty, harsh comments, okay, that I would consider hate comments, right? And then, you know, like, emojis of corpses and things like that. I think that's cruel. I think that's a place we don't have to take it. Um, but then I see a lot of comments from people that say things like, I'm really worried about you, Eugenia. Eugenia. I've watched you for a long time. Um, I really care about you. I wish you would get help. I think that's a supportive comment. I don't feel like that that's a hate comment whatsoever, right? Um, I also made it clear, I think in my last video, the way that I feel about this is that I do not feel that Eugenia Cooney just existing <clears throat> online with an eating disorder um, necessarily is her, and, and I know that people don't agree with me on this, <clears throat> but I don't necessarily think that it's her endorsing an eating disorder. Um, 
you know, it would be very similar to me as somebody that is in active addiction and, and we see this actually on YouTube, you know, with people that chronically smoke marijuana or are chronic alcoholics and they film videos and they don't always show themselves on video high or drunk, but that's who they are when the camera is stopping, right? And so, you know, Eugenia Cooney doesn't get in her videos or TikToks and she doesn't talk about ways to, you know, on eating disorders. There's been websites out there like that through the years. Um, she doesn't get on there and like endorse this lifestyle. She just doesn't address it at all. So people believe that by her just literally existing with an eating disorder online is endorsing an eating disorder. And I'm not sure that I necessarily agree with that. I just want to say, um, I will say I, I really worry about Eugenia. I really um, sh this is one of the reasons why I don't really watch her content that often is because when I am watching somebody and they don't seem very happy to me or they are, you know, like Amber Lynn Reed is somebody that I don't watch anymore. And one of the reasons why I don't watch Amber Lynn Reed is because she doesn't seem very happy in her life. And she also seems to, or she has, I've witnessed this over time. She's taken her her weight issues and she's monetized them, you know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna reference her in this video today because I, something that Eugenia Eugenia did is something that Amberlyn Amberlyn Reed does, but kind of in an opposite way. So I just want to say those things before I get into this. This is a very sensitive topic for me. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have been sober 29 years. Uh, my sobriety birthday is December 17th, 1994. It's one of the reasons why I wore my Just for Today T-shirt, which is a recovery slogan because I'm gonna reference that at the end of this. I'm going to make some comparisons between eating disorders and addiction <clears throat> and the recovery of both of them because I think it's important to let people know that whatever you're struggling with, we do recover. And I'm not somebody, and just because I am sober by way of 12-step program doesn't mean that I believe that that's the only way to get sober. There's a lot of different ways to get sober out there. There's a lot of different ways to get healthy from eating disorders out there, right? But we do recover and we have amazing lives. And that's what I want for people. And that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video today is to just simply plant the seed for somebody out there. Um, so I went in and I watched these TikToks that apparently went viral. Um, I watched a couple of them. <clears throat> there, there are several of them where she's like at Disney World and things like that. Now, Eugenia has been criticized in the past for going to like Disney World or Disneyland and never leaving her hotel room, right? So one of the things that I noticed is she's showing herself out. She's showing herself at a restaurant. She's showing herself like sitting in the park and things like that. And this is important because Eugenia is somebody... I, I feel like this video, these videos are a way for her to speak to the people that don't like her. Now, a lot of people are speculating that she's trying to reinvent herself on YouTube because she was supposedly banned on TikTok. Well, she talked about being banned on TikTok. The thing is, is that a lot of people speculate that Eugenia Cooney was banned on TikTok for representing a lifestyle of an eating disorder, okay? Whenever I have said that in a video, I get a lot of comments from people that are like, that's not necessarily true. Now, Eugenia Cooney has said th some problematic, questionable things on TikTok that could have got her banned. She accidentally flashed somebody at one point, questionably, uh, 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 <laughs> questionably be whether or not it was accidentally, but people, you know, bring that up. And I think there was enough reports that people finally, like, TikTok was like, okay, we got to do something about this. I don't think it was just about the fact that she's a girl that has an eating disorder and nobody's talked about it. And this is the thing. I'm not going to get on video <clears throat> when the entire world is talking about Eugenia Cooney having an eating disorder and she's even acknowledged it in the past and not, and speak to that. Like, I'm not going to, when I watch videos about her, it's like we, people often like dance around those words, right? Like, and like, I'm worried about her and whatever. And I think the thing is, is that people are so worried about Eugenia Cooney that whenever we talk about her <clears throat> online, not in the comment sections, but making videos and stuff like that about her. I think people are very, very worried about if I say something, if I say the wrong thing, if I say this or whatever, right? Well, if somebody is that fragile, that alone, if somebody is that fragile um, on, online that about their mental health issues, and that, that probably is a sign to the people around them that maybe they shouldn't be online. And Eugenia Cooney is somebody that lives online literally 24 hours a day. I mean, she is online all the time, okay? So when I went into this and I started seeing that she was like, because I think I watched them backwards and she was like out in the park and I was like, oh, she's doing this because people always criticize her and say she never leaves her room, right? Which I thought was interesting because in one of these TikToks I was watching, she like thanks the people that work at the park. She's like, everybody that works at the park is so nice. And when you watch it, I'm laughing because it's just, it's, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, it's just insanity. But like the second person, she, she, she thanks like, 
the people that work at the park, and then she says, and the room service people. And I'm like, that to me is kind of like such a, that's such a strange person to like thank. And I mean, I've been to Disney World. I've been to Disneyland, right? I mean, my husband and I travel on a regular basis. We do get room service, but that wouldn't be the first person. I, I'm thankful for the people that work room service and they're fantastic, but that wouldn't be the first person that I would thank, you know? I mean, there's a lot of people that I meet throughout my day when I'm traveling that I, I can't, and that work at the hotel and, you know, clean the rooms and take care of the property and, you know, the servers and things like that. I'm not sure that the room service person is the first person that I would be thanking. So for me, it was like, okay, so you really are staying in your room a lot. Like that's on your mind. Like that's the first thing that you're thinking about, right? So then are these videos performative? Are you like just stepping outside of your hotel room? I mean, she shows a lot from her hotel. Everywhere she goes, she shows a lot. She's like, this is a beautiful lobby and blah, 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 whatever. And it's like, are you in your hotel? I mean, okay, like that's confusing to me, right? I also think that that speaks to the volumes of people being like, well, when she walks around the park, people probably are saying things to her or noticing her and things like that, right? So that was like one of the first things I thought. So I thought, is, are these TikToks performative? Like, is she doing this to kind of like prove a point to her haters, to get her haters off her back? I don't think it's necessarily like she's trying to reinvent herself. I think this is her way to speak to the people that are speaking negatively of her, in all honesty. Now, the TikTok that people are referencing that is getting, it like went viral and is getting tons and tons of views is a TikTok where she's with her mother. And I believe at that time, they're like, are they in like Maine or Rhode I think they're in Rhode Island and they're like on their way there or something like that or she's there for a couple days and they're like in this hotel restaurant and she's showing like everything that she did you guys see this TikTok I'm not going to include the TikTok because that's Eugenia's and people don't like or TikTok doesn't like when I include TikToks in my videos so I'm not going to include that over here um, I also kind of feel some kind of way about including a TikTok that has Eugenia Cooney um, desperately eating to prove something to her hater. It's like, I, I don't know how I feel about that, including that in this video. But anyway, so she shows this stuff. I thought it was interesting that she said in there that they gave her like, they like gave her a, uh, like she said something about like, they brought us some egg salad as like, you know, like for, I was like, that's kind of like a weird thing for a restaurant to bring somebody as like egg salad. But anyway, so she gets like this lobster roll and fries and all this kind of stuff. And she is like, she takes, and then she shows like this huge, huge plate of like, it looks like arugula is what it looks like. Like, like just a salad. And she, the, the lobster roll is like to the side and the fries are in front of her. She takes the, the lobster roll is like this big. When she takes it, she like shows the side of it. Okay. Now I do review videos where I eat food and people know that I'm on a health journey. And so I am like, I'll take like a bite or two of a cookie and then I'm done with it. Right. She takes, and people will say in my videos, could you eat more of the cookie to actually let us know what the cookie tastes like? This girl did not even bite into any part of the lobster of the lobster roll, okay? I mean, she literally took the smallest flake off of the edge of the smallest edge of the roll. I mean, there is no way she got any part of lobster or anything inside the sandwich or this, this roll inside of her mouth. I mean, she's like, mm, oh, it's so good. And I'm like, you literally didn't, you like tasted like the crust of the bread, okay? And, and there's a point why I'm saying this, right? Then she takes a french fry and she eats like the littlest part of this french fry and she puts it down, all right? Now, the reason why I'm addressing this because I just want you guys to understand my perspective of what I saw when I see it. So I'm like streaming through the comments, okay? And this is where it's, for me, very, very dangerous. The comments, there are a lot of comments that people are like, and I don't know if she's like deleting comments or whatever. Eugenia Kinney is not somebody that's really known for deleting a, a lot of comments that, I, that I'm aware of. But the comments are very much like, oh, Eugenia, I'm so happy for you. You're like eating again. I'm so happy for you. You look better. I did not think she looked better at, at all. And I, actually, she looked very concerning to me. And so there, all these comments are like, you look so great, you look so good, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, this is so interesting to me, right? Because like, let's just say if, and, and you have to think about this, okay, from the mind of like the disease of addiction or the mind of the disease of an eating disorder, right? If she really isn't eating in her head and this is performative for her and she's just showing this and she's, because she literally, it's not like she ate part of the sandwich, okay? And this is something that Eugenia Cooney has never really done in any of her videos, she doesn't, like, drink anything on her videos. She doesn't, like, eat anything. She hardly even eats any candy or anything like that, right? So this is something new for her. 
Um, which is why I think a lot of people are saying that she's reinventing herself by doing these things. I don't think that's what it is, okay? Because she's taking such small bites of this. I think she's wanting to prove to people that she's eating. But you have to remember the mind of, set of where she's at, okay? So if all of these comments under there are like, you look so good... But she knows she's not really eating. She's just eating little, little bites of this. What that's going to reaffirm for her is that her not eating looks good. And that's where it's dangerous, right? Because we don't know what happens when she shuts the camera off. We don't know how much of that lobster roll she ate. We don't know that. The other thing that's so dangerous about these comments to me is that people are equating eating with the therapeutic solution to an eating disorder, all right? And that is not the case at all, right? Like, for example, and like with addiction, a lot of people believe that just putting down the drink or the drug is the solution to addiction, right? Well, I think that whatever way you get sober, what you know is that just putting down the drink or the drug is not what takes away the mindset, the addiction, okay? There's a lot of issues underlying that that you have to work on to work through, right? So that down the road, you don't pick up again or that your addiction doesn't float into other areas because it can float into other areas. It can, you know, it, addiction is a lot about control. Eating disorders are a lot about control. So when people are saying, I'm so proud of you for eating, this is so great, I'm glad that you're eating, I'm thinking to myself, but she, is she in therapy? Is she, what's going on here with her? Because she doesn't look physically any better to me than she did six months ago when I made my last video about her, right? So all these people are like underneath there in the comments and, the, and like the video went viral and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is a lot of pressure to put on somebody that has been called out for the last 10 years for having an eating disorder online. And now all of a sudden she takes one little flake of a piece of bread off a sandwich and people are singing her praises. That is a lot of pressure for anybody that has any mental health issues. All right. And what that could do to your head and things like that. And it's very dangerous. Like I said, I've had a lot of people in my life that have eating disorders. Okay. And it's very, very tricky. Um, you know, it's, Eugenia said in her video that she wanted people to be kind and treat people like human beings. Um, you know, I can remember I had a friend of mine who is recovering from an eating disorder and doing is doing fantastically today. She was probably, um, I would say, like, I felt like my friend at the time that myself and other people around her were concerned about her and her family was concerned about her. And she was a grown adult like Eugenia Cooney. You cannot force those people into a treatment and therapy unless you do like 72-hour holds on them or I think in what they call it in California, 5150s and things like that, right? And I think the other thing that the misconception about like 72-hour holds or 5150s, like in Indiana where I live, 72-hour holds are 48 to 72 hour holds are extremely difficult to get on people because you have to work with like a doctor, a judge. And then after at the end of 72 hours, um, I mean, we, we don't really, like, especially on an issue like eating disorders, we don't live um, in the world of, like, 1950 psychiatric hospitals anymore. Thank God, right? But, like, that's not the world that we live in anymore. So even at the end of 72 hours, if they evaluate you, they're going to be evaluating you for whether or not you're a safety to yourself or others, okay? And if at the end of 72 hours... Eugenia Cooney or anybody else has said all the things that they need to say, they're going to let you go, especially as a grown adult, okay? Like, you do not have to sign yourself into treatment. And I think that that's like this misconception. People are like, why aren't they stepping in and doing anything? One of a Well, the thing is, is that you also have to educate the family. You also have to educate the, the friends around them, right? Like, my dad was somebody that had to be highly educated about addiction to learn how to set boundaries and limits with me, right? It wasn't just about, let's stick him into treatment, whatever. It was what came after that. You know, for example, if Eugenia Cooney's family would be educated on it and say, these are the boundaries we're going to set if you don't take care of yourself because we're that worried about you, right? And that's what's troublesome to me is when I see that she's surrounded by people that aren't setting boundaries and limits, okay? They're willing to go to Florida with her or where, I think she's at Disney World, not Disneyland, but I could be wrong, wherever she's at. And they're, they're engaging in these videos where she's showing people that she's eating, okay? And, and you know... Like, I was going to say this, you know, I had this friend of mine that I felt like she looked emaciated, okay, before she got help. And this was many years ago. I felt like she, I mean, I was worried about her. Like, and I just felt like she was like, and I wouldn't, we would go out to dinner and things like that. And she did all the things that I have witnessed through the years with my other friends. She pushed her food around on the table. She took very little bites of things. She ate things that were high in sugar to give her energy instead of, you know, like eating re like real food that would give her real energy and things like that. She did not look healthy at all. She was always tired. 
tired. She didn't have a lot of energy. And she rarely ever wanted to leave home because anytime she did, people were commenting on it, right? So she stayed at home a lot. You know, she worked from home. She was able to work from home and all this kind of stuff. Actually, I should reach out to her because she might be willing to come on here and do a video at some time because I think her story, I, I share a lot about recovery and her story is recovery from eating disorder. I think she'd be more than, she talks a lot about it. And I think she'd be more than willing to share it, right? But... <clears throat> We basically did like kind of like an intervention thing on her and um, and it wasn't led by me. It was by her family where everybody came around her and said that they were concerned about her. And, you know, the thing is, is that any one of us in that room that day that would say anything to her about we're very concerned about you. We're very concerned about your weight, how you look, you don't eat, you push your food around. I'm really worried about you. I'm worried you're going to die. I'm worried you're not going to be here to enjoy life with us on and on and on. Each one of those comments that we would say those things to her in a very kind way, because we were coached to say it in a very kind way, she would respond to us and she'd say, you do not love me. You do not care about me. If you cared about me, you wouldn't be saying these things. And we were saying very supportive, loving things to her, right? It wasn't until the end where her family basically said <clears throat> that if you, do, if you don't seek help, then we no longer can continue to support you. And everybody in this room stands behind this. And there was like 10 of us in the room. And that she was willing to go in to get treatment. And it was not her last treatment. It, I think she had two treatments after that. And then finally started getting healthier. And today she's healthy, but she still struggles with having an eating disorder today. It's something that you struggle with your entire life, okay? So when people are commenting on this video... It's almost, for me, the people are a bigger issue than Eugenia Cooney is at this point. Because the people that are leaving the comments are like, you look so great and all this kind of stuff. And I'm so happy that you're eating. That is not a solution to this. It's not like she's sitting there on video and she's talking about, well, I had my therapy session yesterday and I went to therapy and therapy was so great. And I'm really glad that I went to... That's not the conversation that she's having on her TikTok. She's not having TikToks even sharing awareness, okay? She's not even at the first part of awareness of saying, you guys, you have brought this to my attention for years. I, I'm fully aware that I have an eating disorder. It's very scary to me. And the thing is, is that people that have eating disorders or addiction issues, they live in denial for, for so long, you know? I, for years and years and years, I knew I had a problem. I didn't know how bad my problem was, you know? And when people would say to me, you have a problem with drinking and drugs, I would say, no, you have a problem with my drinking and drugs. I don't have a problem. It's not a problem for me. It's a problem for you. And what I would do is I would isolate those people out of my life. Well, we've seen that historically with Eugenia Cooney. When people speak out, there's been influencers in the past that have spoken out and tried to get Eugenia Cooney help. And what does she do? She gets rid of them. Okay. Well, that's what I did in active addiction. She's in her active eating disorder right now. Right? So when people are saying things to her, like, I'm so proud of you for eating, that's why I wanted to make it clear in the video how little I witnessed. You can go over her TikTok and you can see it for yourself. How little I witnessed that she was actually eating in this video. It was very concerning to me because people are singing her praises for it. And I'm like, I think it's great that you have support. You know, she's saying, hey, thank you for the support and blah, 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 whatever. That doesn't take away from the fact that the girl needs some serious help. Like I said, I, we went to our friend and her family came and everything like that. And she, my friend looked a lot healthier than Eugenia Cooney looks today. At the time that she went in and helped and the doctor said to her, if you continue on the road that you're at, you will be dead within a year. That's what they told her the first time she entered treatment. And like I said, it wasn't her last time. So I think she went two more times. And so it was in outpatient treatments and aftercare and had an individual therapist for years on end after that and things like that. It took a lot of work and she still struggles with it. Right? And she didn't look anywhere near physically what Eugenia Cooney looks like. Eugenia Cooney is so, I'm like, she really makes my heart sad because I worry so much about her, right? And this is why influencers don't want to talk about her because one day something's going to happen and then anybody that talked about her, people are going to say, well, see, you shouldn't have been talking about her. You know, well, I think it is important to talk about people that that we are online with and that we're worried about and things like that. You know, if, if this weren't Eugenia Cooney, let's just take it out of this for a second. If this weren't Eugenia Cooney, if this were, let's just say, I mean, we're in a world where celebrities like J-Lo and Ben Affleck are going through a divorce and people are talking about them. Britney Spears, you know, is constantly, should she be in a conservatorship? Should she not be in a conservatorship? You know, all these people that they're talking about online, blah, 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 whatever. If this were a celebrity, okay, on that level, are you telling me that you do not believe that every magazine out there would be covering this, this person's eating disorder and that how unhealthy they looked and be taking pictures of them walking on the beach, taking pictures of them eating, talking about it? They would be, right? 
And if this were somebody in your life, you would be very, very concerned about him, right? Now, I said I was going to compare this to Amberlynn Reed a little bit. And this is where, for me, this is where I stopped watching Amberlynn Reed. So, if you watch Amberlynn Reed back in the day, Amberlynn Reed is somebody that she struggled with her weight the entirety of her channel, okay? But back in the day, it was almost kind of like, and, and I believe it because I've talked to Amberlynn Reed in the past, she was very unaware of, like, the things that she would say on video, and then she would get mass hate for it, right? So she would do, like, a Torrid haul. But she was just doing it because she liked Torrid and she wanted to do a haul. But then she would get all these comments from people, right? Well, then what started happening is she started, like, playing into that. And I can remember one time saying something to her about wanting to make a video, and she said, I don't care what you make about me because people are going to, they're going to say whatever they want to say anyway, so make whatever video you want to make about me, right? And it was at that point that I really stopped talking about Amberlynn Reed on a regular basis because I was like, she is using her health. You know, when we're talking about things like eating disorder and addiction and weight and things like that, we're not just talking about hot topics. We're talking about life or death, okay? I, I want to make that very, very clear. My recovery to me from addiction is life or death. Friends of mine that have had eating disorders that got help for it, it, their recovery is life or death for them. This is life or death. There have been celebrities like Karen Carpenter and many others that have passed away from eating disorders. This is, this is not, like, this is not just like child's play. This is, these are huge issues that we're talking about, right? <clears throat> if this were somebody that were in your regular life, like a family member or a friend, you would be saying something. I hope, I hope. Because I have in my life. And Eugenia Cooney asked to be spoken to like a human being. So, Eugenia, I'm speaking to you like a human being. To my friends, several of them, not just the story that I told, I have gone to them and said, I'm very, very worried about you. I have noticed that you are body checking yourself on a regular basis. I notice that you move food around. You don't hardly eat anything when we go out to eat, okay? I notice that you've lost a lot of weight. I notice that you seem to lack energy. I, I notice that you have a lot of the signs and symptoms of an eating disorder. And you don't want to talk about it, right? I, I am nobody that will stand by when I have a friend that is suffering from a mental health issue or an eating disorder or addiction or anything like that. And one thing that people know about me is if anybody ever brings it to my doorstep in my personal life and says anything to me on a very, very, and I'm not going to say the word, but on a very, very serious level, that is the moment that I will like get authorities involved and call family members and things like that. I don't take that stuff as a joke. I have lost too many people in my life, period, end of story. This is a serious topic. This is a serious topic that we're talking about with Eugenia Cooney. Well, what Amberlynn Reed started doing was she started playing into the haters, okay? She would start doing toward hauls, but she would have like a dress on and she'd go, oh, I love this shirt. She would make jokes so that people would be like, oh my God, she thinks that's a, a, a shirt and it's actually a dress. And she would play into that. Then she started all this diet nonsense where she started showing all these diets she would do. And then she started doing 100 days of weigh-in. And four days in, she'd be like, that doesn't work. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing 100 days of weigh-in. I only made it to day four. But I'm really proud of myself. Now I'm switching to this diet. Uh, Amberlynn Reed has switched to so many different diets and fad diets and said she's going to this doctor for that and then cancel an appointment. For it's all, she plays it all up for the views on her channel, okay? And then here we have Eugenia Cooney coming out and she's eating the smallest bit of bread on a video to prove to her hate, she's playing into her haters at this point, okay? Over the eating disorder. For me, for me, right? Eugenia Cooney in the past has not been somebody that is actively online talked about. Have, she's talked about it briefly in the past about, you know, going to treatment and things like that. She's talked about her, like, you know, the police coming. She's talked briefly about it. She's talked briefly about having an eating disorder. I think she addressed it with Shane Dawson and that thing. But she really isn't somebody that talks about it on a, on a regular basis. For me... This is kind of where she's crossed over to the other side, where she's engaging with the haters and she is showing herself eating online, okay? This is, that's not, for somebody that has an eating disorder, just proving to somebody that you're actually eating a little bit of a lobster roll is not proving that you're getting healthy, okay? Proving that you're getting healthy is talking about what therapeutic measures you're, you're taking to get healthy. It's talking about do you have a therapist, okay? What things are you doing? It's educating people on what you're doing, sharing those things with people. And she doesn't have to share those things with people. She doesn't have any responsibility to share those things with people, okay? She shared very little about it in the past. She has no responsibility to do that. I'm not putting that on her. She also doesn't have any responsibility to engage in showing this behavior where she's eating a little bit and people are threading the comments with, I'm so proud of you for eating. That statement can be very, very dangerous, okay? For an active addict to show up to, let's say, a family dinner and they have been, let's say, shooting dope or drinking every single day and I never shot dope. And one of the reasons why, and I'm going to talk about this 
this in my video that I, I'm going to do today about the Ashley Madison documentary on my Peter uh, Watches TV channel. But one of the reasons why I never did heroin was because it was never offered to me, okay? But I can remember going, the camera stopped, but I can remember going to family dinners, okay? And I wouldn't have drank, I, I would have drank, eaten pills, done all this kind of stuff, cocaine, on and on and on, the whole week, all right? And then the, the morning of the family dinner got up and been like shaking and trying not to use anything, having to use just a month enough to get by so I didn't have DTs and wasn't shaking and didn't look bad enough to show up to dinner. When people would say to me at family dinners, you look really good, what that said to me in my head was, you just, they have no clue how much you're using. You can use more. Actually, you could probably use the day of the next family dinner. That reaffirmed for me that I was getting away with what I was doing, okay? So when people are saying those statements on there, and I'm not telling anybody to leave comments that are harsh because I think that's cruel, but you know, the comments that people leave were like, they say I'm really worried about you. I'm not telling people to leave those comments either. Leave whatever comment. If you wanna shine her on and say that you think she looks the healthiest she's ever looked, that's the comment that you need to leave, then leave it, okay? I'm not gonna tell anybody what comments to leave on any kind of videos. I'm not gonna tell anybody who to watch. I just think it's important to be aware of what we're saying when we're saying it to somebody. And as influencers on the other side of the camera, I will tell you when you do read one comment, you do. You can go through 100 comments and read that one comment. And that one comment is one comment that stands out to you. You know? I hope that Eugenia Cooney gets help. I hope that she really does, right? Now, Eugenia Cooney is something like 30, 30, 28, 30, something like that. She's not too old to get help, you know? I have friends of mine that got sober way into their... My mother got sober at 51 years old, okay? And was sober 13 years before... She, almost 13... 12 years and 11 months before she passed away. I have had friends of mine that got healthy off from eating disorders and other mental health issues long after they were 35, 40 years old, okay? So she's not, she's not too late in the game to get help. I still hold out a lot of hope for Eugenia Cooney, but Eugenia Cooney needs help. She needs help. She doesn't need people singing her praises for eating a little piece of bread on a video. That's not what she needs. Eugenia Cooney needs help. And it's not really, and the sad thing is, it's not really anything that I can do. It's not really anything that people in the comment sections can do. I mean, whether you watch her or don't watch her isn't going to really, for me, I don't know that I really think that that's going to change a whole lot, honestly, okay? It's the people around her. It's her close family and friends. It's the people that interact with her, that talk to her on the phone. Those are the people that have actually some play in the game, right? But I think people are scared to say anything. Well, here's the thing, Eugenia, and if you are watching this, I'm going to speak right to you, and this is one of the reasons why I wore this t-shirt today, my Just For Today t-shirt, which is a recovery slowing, a saying, because we just have to do it one day at a time, just for today, okay? And when I first got sober, I used to sit at my kitchen counter, and I've shared this story a lot, all right? I used to sit at my kitchen counter, and I would have all these numbers of people that I had met in meetings, and I would have all these numbers over here of, like, drug dealers and things like that, and I would look at the clock, and I'd say to myself, if I can just make it to, let's say, 4 o'clock, then at 4 o'clock, I can walk down to the liquor store, or at 4 o'clock, I can call one of my dealers, and then I would call all these other people that I had met at meetings until I got somebody on the phone, right? And they would talk me through it. It wasn't for me one day at a time at the beginning. For me, it was literally five minutes at a time, sometimes one minute at a time for me to stay sober. And I'm still here at 29 years and what, three months, five months, sober, one day at a time, okay? And you can do it too, just for today. I think the hardest thing for me when I got sober was I did not know who I was gonna be without using drugs or alcohol. I didn't know who I was gonna be without that world. I didn't know who I was gonna be without that mindset. You know, we talk in recovery about character defects. We talk about things that protect us. All those things were things that had made me who I was, that protected me over all the shit that had happened to me for all the years before that. Not to, not to mention that I do believe that I was born an alcoholic and an addict, and I think a lot of people are born with mental health issues and things like that, right? And I believe that I was born as an alcoholic and an addict. So I think that contributed to it greatly. But I had a lot of stuff in my life that I was trying to control and had no control over by my addiction, and I had a lot of things that I was trying to mute because I didn't want to think about or have to deal with by my addiction, okay? So the scariest thing for me in the world was to walk through treatment. Had I not been completely out of my mind the night that I walked into treatment, it was my fifth treatment, okay? I don't think that I would have ever walked into treatment. Had my dad and people in my life, my dad called all of my friends and said, if you really care about him, do not take his calls. My dad called my mother, who was in her own active addiction, and said, if you really love him, do not take his calls. He will manipulate you to come and pick him up and get him out of there, okay? Then my dad said, I love you enough that I'm going to set these limits and these boundaries for you, okay? And these are the things that are going to happen if you don't get sober. I'm done. I wash my hands of it. 
I am so incredibly grateful for my father for doing the things. And he told me later, just a few years ago, we were talking because I read the book Beautiful Boy about a father's story of his son's meth addiction. And I asked my dad, and, and meth was not my drug of choice. I didn't use meth. But it, the, the stories were very similar. I asked my dad, I said, did, have you ever read this book? And he was like, yeah. And I, he read it when it first came out. I was like, how did you know about it? He goes, I don't know. I read it in like the New York Times or something like that. And I said... Was it how, like, it was with, and before I could even get out, he goes, it was exactly how it was with you. I lived with that fear every single day. And he told me, he said, you know, when I was in treatment, when you were in treatment the last time, and I set those limits and boundaries for you, he goes, I was sure you were going to go back out, and you were going to keep on using, and you were going to die. And at some point in my head, I was going to have to be okay with that because I realized I couldn't control it anymore. That you were either going to get the help that you needed or you weren't going to. And it wasn't up to me anymore, but I could set the boundaries and limits in place. That's what you do for people that you love. When you love people, you tell them that you're worried about them. You tell them that you will hold their hand as they get help, okay? You don't sit by and just watch this stuff going on. It's so concerning for me. And Eugenia, I know you're not watching this. I think you're a very nice girl that has made maybe a few mistakes here and there. Okay? And that doesn't seem to have much of a life other than living online. But that's your life. And if that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. Okay? But you seem to be a very nice girl. But I will say this. There is a world out there for you to enjoy. Okay? Other than having to prove to a bunch of people what you're doing or what you're not doing. Because the, really the person that's suffering the most, okay, is you. And it's not about the comments. And it's not about what people say to you. And it's not about you needing to prove anything to you. You're suffering because you're slowly not taking care, care of yourself and not being healthy. And it's very, very worrisome. And I'm trying to say this as kind as I can. If I were saying this to a friend of mine, what I would say to my friend... If my friend were in that condition, I would say, I love you. I am worried about you. If you do not get help, you are going to die. That's what I would say. I would say that to anybody that I loved out there. You ask for people to talk to you with kindness and treat each other like human beings. That's how I treat human beings in my life. That's my language of being kind. Because when I love somebody, I tell them that I love them. And this is where my love goes. Okay? I do not believe that love means letting somebody hurt themselves. I don't believe that. I think loving somebody enough means stepping in and saying, I am really worried about you. We're going to get you the help that you need. And no matter how resistant you are, we're going to set the boundaries in place to make it difficult for you to not get help. Okay? Not only does Eugenia Cooney need to be seeing a therapist, her mom and her whole family need to be seeing therapists too. To be taught about this disease and be taught about how to set appropriate boundaries and limits. Because the boundaries and limits you set for somebody with an eating disorder are completely different than the boundaries and limits that you set with somebody that has addiction issues. Right? So, and it, you don't really set boundaries and limits with people that have mental health issues. You just care for them. You love them. You ask them what they're going through. Right? Eugenia, there are people out there that will listen to you. I was so scared to get sober because I did not know who I was without the drink or the drug. I was terrified. I didn't know who I was. I'm telling you today, at 29 years sober, one day at a time, just for today, my life is beyond amazing, okay? And you can act whatever way that you want to act for whoever you want to make it look like that for online, but it's obvious that you are not the happiest person in the world. But there is a world out there where people are waiting for you, okay? Your story could be so cathartic for so many people. Instead of trying to prove to all your haters that you're eating a lobster roll, you could be showing and leading the way and planting the seed for hundreds of thousands of people out there that struggle every single day with eating disorders just like you do. That, to me alone, should be inspiration enough to want to try to get help. You could be the most inspiring story the internet has seen in a very, very long time. Or you could not share any of it at all and just get healthy for yourself. But one way or the other, I hope that you get healthy. I hope that you take care of yourself. And I hope that you find a need to not stop trying to prove something to these haters out there. The people that are saying these things and teach them lessons like they need to speak with kindness and love. And you need to stop making videos uh, about eating stuff. I hope that you find a need to stop doing all that kind of stuff. And what you do is you prove to yourself that you're good enough. Because you are. You're good enough. Okay, and you're worthy of love deep down inside, but you got to do it for yourself first. I love you guys. Let me know what you think in the comment sections, and I will see you in the comment section, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.